All right, ladies and gentlemen, Poet the Band is in the building! Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> Dude, we appreciate you joining. Thank you so much. Do me a favor real quick. For those that may not know who you are, sir, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are and plug and promote anything and everything. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I know Spencer's going to be hopping on here in a second. I thought we had five more minutes, but... Uh, my as soon as you Kevin. click it, we're live, so it goes ding, ding, ding to us while we're uh, live. So, oh, uh, when in the message she said join it and we'll be live in eight. But, <laughs> anyways, um, my name is Kevin. I'm the drummer and poet the band. Um, Spencer and myself were based out of Metro Detroit. Uh, the other two gentlemen, Aiden and Cody, are based out of Tennessee. So, uh, oh, there's Spencer right now. There you go. There you go. What's up, sir? How are you doing? I don't, but he might, oh, he's putting his headphones in. Oh. <laughs> can you hear Spencer. me? Can you hear me? Can you see us? He looks lost. <laughs> Spencer, you're live in front of millions and millions. Oh, hell yeah. I'm just kidding. Late to the party? <laughs> yes. No, you're good. You're good. What's up, dude? How are you? I'm good, man. How about yourself? I'm doing fantastic. Better now that you guys are here. Uh, I noticed that you guys only have really two singles obviously one with an unplugged version so the band must be fairly new is that accurate yes. yeah brand new very correct how did you guys all find each other because you're There's you're layers. from different states so i'm just imagining <laughs> how that how that process went down so um it's probably me and cody's fault that this band exists because uh <laughs> me and cody met first and then uh, we were touring in, in different bands and then he started a band with Aiden. I don't know how they, how they met, to be honest. Um, but yeah, me and Cody have known each other since 2011 or something like that. We, we looked this up. I don't remember what, what the actual time frame was, but, uh, March of last year, they were like, they alerted me that they were making a pro uh, a new project. And I was like, yeah, hell yeah, get on this. And, uh, we had a drummer like willing to work with us at the time and he wasn't really what we were looking for and the communication wasn't there so uh literally the same day um i think we got rid of him or it's like a day or two afterwards hey, Kevin hits me up and like hey how's your other band doing and i was like you know what i've got this other band that i'm starting now and um here we are that's that's the, the shortest way of explaining it. <laughs> is it does it go like where you guys track out some stuff and then you just you just send all the stems back and forth as far as building songs or, or when you guys practice is there like a middle meeting ground and that's where the writing goes down like how does a song get written? It can happen both ways that you just described. Uh, it's easiest to do like work by yourself and then send it to the rest of the guys. That's the typical. Um, we have gotten together several times to like to write this EP that we've been working on. Uh, we actually have gotten together in person and wrote it. So it's it's a combination of the two. We've obviously written so many more songs since then uh, that we've done pretty much remote. So thankfully, the Internet makes it very easy to collaborate and work together when you're a thousand miles apart, not even hundreds of miles. Thank you, Internet. Hell yeah. yeah. One thing that's pretty neat is the first time we actually all as a group met was when we shot the music video for Miss Misery. In New York? Or the original no, no, no. video? The original the video. first video, yeah. So, like, we had never jammed together. We had never practiced together. We still like, haven't. I met Cody and Aiden for the very first time. Spencer and I never even really hung out either. So, like, I've known yeah. of him since, like, 2013. So it was yeah. like seven hour drive, you know, him and I are bullshitting the whole fucking time. And then, you know, two days later, we're shooting a fucking music video. <laughs> that is crazy. My co-host today is Metallic. He's frequently uh, in chat. He's one of my mods for the channel. Metallic, do you have a question for the fellows before we uh, before we jam a track of theirs? Yeah, what gives you guys inspiration for what you guys write? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, I feel like... I feel like when we decided we were going to pick the brand of this band and proceed forward, uh, like what we were going to do, we wanted to put to get something that was like as top notch as we can go, uh, as authentic as we can be. 
I don't know. It's it's still kind of hard because I feel like every band that I'm in, we don't really have a genre, even though we fit into a couple. So it's like we don't really have that mindset of like we're trying to write, you know, some songs that sound like so and so, or you know, <laughs> we want to be like next to Bring Me the Horizon or something like that. We want to sound like a day to remember. We just try to write some good songs, and and hope that they speak for themselves. So I mean, it's like as far as coming up with. The inspiration. I feel like we're all, we all listen to different stuff. I mean, I don't know what you listen to, Kevin. We're like all across the board as far as metal, rock, indie, pop, rap, all over the place. I would say it's a good answer. Hell yeah. Uh, well, let's. Why don't we go ahead and jam Miss Misery and uh, see what we're talking about here? We're hanging out with Poet the Band. If you guys are enjoying it, you feel it, please go on Spotify, slap the follow button, support them, and spark it up. Here we go. It's banger, and the acoustic version is like, even though it's the same song, it's like a completely different song to me. It's like an, almost like a reimagined version, and I love That's that you guys went that route. Me. Yeah, I love that you went that route. Can you tell me about the documentary with Josh? So, uh, one of the things that at least got me involved in this band is the that when me and Aiden Cody first spoke, we were talking about like documenting this whole thing because we've all four of us have been in bands for a long time. And I know that it's just like we've done certain things that each one of us haven't, but we've never had like we've never tasted that success we've always dreamed about. And we're like, let's let's document it because uh, we all have an interesting story of what we're doing and where we are and being 30 something to try to still make it in this industry, uh, being a bunch of nobody's trying to make it in this industry as a 30 year old. It's, it seems like it's like the odds are stacked against us. So we thought it'd make pretty compelling stuff. But I mean, it kind of started on the concept of like, you know, what is success? And I think the more that we get interviews, because Josh, Josh Balls isn't the only interview we've had. And, and we have a couple more that we're trying to line up. But we wanted to have like compelling and interesting things that not only we could learn, but you as a, you know, uh, somebody who's watching the documentary could enjoy as well. Like whether it be a, you're a musician or you're just a fan of us, you know, there's, there's going to be something interesting and worthwhile for you to soak in at that um, stage. So are you saying that this is your second interview? Oh no, 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 no. So uh, was Josh, I think Josh was about the fifth or sixth. We've interviewed a couple of friends, uh, a couple of people who've helped us along the way, but Josh is probably the most um, noticeable person at this moment. Like he's got, probably has the biggest name. I've known Josh for quite some time because uh, they started doing Space Zebra. And I ironically went back when he was in Motionless and White, we played a show together. Um, but yeah, I've gotten to know them and what they do for like new and upcoming bands. And what they do is pretty sick. And out of all the people of, as part of Space Zebra, I was like, dude, this guy I can relate to so much. We need to meet and we need to get an interview from him. And he agreed. I didn't think he was going to do it. I was like, oh, shit, this is going to be so sick. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we traveled on our way out to record the music video for the Miss Misery Unplug. We met uh, with him in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania, which is like a stone's throw from where the office is set in. Um, but yeah, no, it was really cool. Everything he said resonated. Um, we do have some other people that we want to get, so uh, I don't want to name any names just yet. I'm just um, fingers crossed. Fingers but crossed. That, that way, it's that way. It's not just like a whole bunch of nobodies, you know, like us, just going, "Hey, why would you <laughs> want to watch Poet the Band's doc?" You know, there's there should be some, you know, bigger headliners in our documentary too. That I understand really some some some, some clickbait, some clickbait value. You yeah. got to. I mean. You got to think of it like a show, so it's like if you don't. Have I mean, some big unless actors. unless we just blow up like out of nowhere, it would look kind of like wow, these guys are cocky as fuck. But <laughs> I mean, the the main reason why it worked was because like you know, Aiden is a cinematographer and he he's done all of our music videos and it's all like really really high quality shit. And like Spencer has like really nice cameras and stuff too. So having access to that kind of skill and the equipment i mean you might as well utilize it when you got it well this is where this interview now gets weird as because mine are mine are a little odd and different than everybody else's did lizzie inform you about the hot sauce yep did you bring some hot sauce oh was i supposed to bring some hot sauce 
Spencer, Spencer there's, there's time. You, you can run to the other room, grab it real quick if you need to. But before you do, sir, I need to know something about you and Kev. I need to know. I know you haven't met each other a bunch of times, but let's pretend things are blowing up. We're in a van. We're going cross country. Except the, the first DVD you put in the DVD player is stuck. You can't get it out. But you agreed to this movie or TV show because it's your favorite. If I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. I mean, you, you want us to pick the TV show? I think I, I think it's easier to pick a movie because TV shows have so many episodes. I can just pull randomly from like season four, and usually I'm successful in the stump if I do that. So in my opinion, it's easier to go the movie route, but it's your call. Right. What movie or See, TV I would show? Go with The Office because my wife and I religiously just watch that nonstop. But <laughs> I've watched it a lot. I just don't think I'm. I've watched it as religious as uh, Kevin. So we're counting on Kevin to pull through on this one. Metallic, go <laughs> ahead and, and ask a question or two, and uh, give me a second to look for some office trivia. Uh, so a lot of us in the music industry have had a first band. So what would your takeaway be from your first band? Like, what would you want people to not do with that kind of, with their first band? You want to go first, Kev? Sure. <laughs> so the first band I was ever in was in high school. So like, I wouldn't use that as like a negative example. If anything, it gave me the drive to pursue it like as an actual thing. The actual first real serious band I was in, um, I would say to like my younger self, don't be the financier unless you're a hundred percent, a hundred and fifty percent sure every single person that's involved is really willing to go a hundred percent. And I'm sure Spencer can share that sentiment too. Oh, I've been yeah. in a similar situation. Yeah. I feel that. I would definitely tell any young musician out there. It would be two things. I wouldn't just pick one. It'd be make sure you find people, even uh, even if you don't get along with them, make sure they're like-minded to you because their passion and their drive is going to be what also helps keep you going, but also make you not want to throttle and kill them when they decide to stop or having that passion, even though they like swore, you know, to Jesus or Satan that they would do this until they die. The other thing I would say is like, if you have any interest in anything else, start learning how to do that. Um, I feel like it, maybe it's just because the music industry, I was so foreign to me, but literally having any sort of skill outside that can be useful, anywhere from graphic design to shooting music videos, recording, booking, anything where you can also make money at it, but just help bring some sort of capacity to the band, a skill, a talent that's not just standing on stage and doing that job is so much more vital than anything else. Like even playing guitar really good or playing drums like a phenom. Um, or if you sing like um, like Mariah Carey, like it doesn't matter. Like having these extra skills can help you take so much such a level. Not, I mean, if you sing like Mariah Carey and you're an amazing singer, maybe that's your talent there and that's all you need. But for the most part, most yeah, most musicians need a lot more work, and you're balancing so much other shit on the music business side that playing shows is like a, a fraction of what you actually need to do. So learning other things to help supplement I your gotcha. talents and market be all a, that good shit. Be a multitasker. Yeah, and I mean, like, if you're in a band and, like, you're having to outsource all that stuff, like, that's a lot of money. Now, granted... Yeah buying your own mixers and cameras and lenses and all that shit costs money too but you can at least maybe get a return on investment for it if you get good enough to like shoot other bands and shit but it's one less thing you have to outsource and like bands are like boats bust out another thousand i mean just well but not only that <laughs> i'm gonna piggyback what you just said is there's thousands of people out there who are trying to be a manager or trying to be a mixer and stuff if you have some knowledge in it It'll definitely help you to know and root out like, wow, we shouldn't work with this person or we should go to somebody else to record or we should not yeah. use this booking agent because you have some experience at it. That's probably the most crucial two things is you save money by doing it, even though you might not be as good as somebody else. But you also save money because you start learning what you, to see and what is good. So I got you. Don't you. go, all right, uh, let's work with this uh, manager that isn't going to do shit and we'll just take a paycheck. Let's see if you have seen The Office, Kev, as many times as you say. Oh, don't count me out, dude. I'm sure I can help. And Spence. But really, Kev, because he said that he watches it religiously. Here we go. In The Office, 
There's an episode called A Benny Hanna Christmas. How does Michael distinguish each waitress from each other in this episode? He takes a, he takes a marker and makes a, a line on her <laughs> arm. <laughs> Mother <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. You have not been stumped. I hit the wrong button, but that is correct. <laughs> was you... it a line? I thought he like write, wrote something. He no, it was just like a line. He writes with a marker on their arm. That is correct. You did not have to do the hot sauce. I unfortunately do. This is a uh, Oaxaca tequila lime. And I have to follow it up with another hot sauce. Damn it. So I'm going to follow it up with cowboy bacon because uh, if I don't stop, you have to do one. It doesn't necessarily land on hot sauce. But um, no, wait, are you just a swig of that? Just a big old fat swig. This is the regular routine oh, around here on this show, unfortunately. But uh, <laughs> what, what, are, what are your guys' goals? We don't have a whole lot more time, but I do want to know what goals you guys have for the rest of 2023. Like, what would you like to accomplish? Um, I mean, ideally, blowing up on TikTok would pretty much solve every single problem. Uh, yeah, but I mean, uh, we, we definitely have some show. Damn, dude, you all right? <laughs> Just see your reaction. That's only one. I got one more. This one's even hotter. Oh, damn. <laughs> I would say, uh, play some shows, sell some records, put out some music. I feel like, unless you've got some sort of like ace in the hole that you can guarantee, which I don't think is a thing. You know, that's like really all you can do is try to just put your best foot forward and make some connections, network, put out good music, play some sweet shows, and and keep working your way up the up the staircase. Why? Yeah, I mean, that's my my sentiment as well. Like continual improvement to me um, is a lot more than just like expecting to wake up and all of a sudden there's like a record deal like right in front of you. But <clears throat> just in like the short time that we have been a project. I can easily say we've already accomplished more than like most bands I've ever been in minus playing shows. And while playing shows are a lot of fun, it's just really opened my eyes to like having your shit together on the business side really, really goes a long way. Two part question. Why add the band to poet? And was there any other, obviously that's a good band name, but was there any terrible band names that almost became the band's name instead of poet, the band? So ironically, the band name was pretty much decided as me and Kev joined the project. It wasn't completely solidified because he, they just wanted to call it. So Aiden and Cody came up with Poet. I'm not sure if it was Aiden or Cody or both of them or whatever, but they came up with Poet. And after talking to like one of our consultants, somebody who was actually going to be in the documentary, um, they, he said, like, Poet is such a broad brand name that we probably need to add something that's a little bit more defined. So that way, when people search Google, something else doesn't come up. Because there's, I think there is another poet band, not poet the band, it's just poet. Right. Uh, there's probably several artists called poet. So it's just like defining it as poet the band seemed to make the most sense as far as to separate branding. Makes sense. And then was there, so I know you said you'd kind of like, once you joined, that was the deciding factor. But was there any other considerations besides poet for, for a possible band name? Like, to be honest, I don't think so. Yeah, because all, all this shit was pretty much... By the time I hooked up with the Southern Boys, everything was kind of literally put together. They had Miss Misery recorded already. And all me and Kev really do is just kind of now pull forward as we keep going along. So it's like something like a lot of these things, a lot of these decisions were already made, which is fine by me because I feel like the band name, it doesn't really matter. It's just got to be something that's, you know, catchy enough to be remembered and doesn't sound ridiculous, so... What what's funny to me is like I thought poet sounded cool, and then when they added the band, I was kind of like, oh, that's sort of cringe. But after like everything that we've done, like I actually really like it, and a lot of people have given us compliments on it too. So it, at first, well, yeah, I wasn't the biggest fan, but I, I dig it. It's so not unheard of. There's Camino the band, Horse the band, or is it the band Camino? So it's like. I feel like when we started music, Kev, that was the thing. You don't call yourself, you know, right. Spencer the band. That's just so. That's what makes it cringe is that our history and concept of what happened in the past. But now it's like it's been accepted. What isn't cool is now cooler than it was. So now we're like, oh shit, dude, nothing's cringe anymore. I swear. <laughs> it makes sense. And we'll we'll end on this. I'm gonna try one more time to stump you on some office trivia, and then we'll let you guys go. 
could be. I, I've seen a lot of The Office, probably half of the entire catalog, I would say. I don't know if this is a harder one, an easy one, but here we go. At the Stamford branch, what video game is everybody playing? Uh, do you have to say which which specific Call of Duty? No, that is they the answer. Damn it. Yeah. It is Call of Duty. The, the only thing I can think of. You got it. So you guys have definitely seen The Office a couple of times, that's for sure. <laughs> and you didn't even stump me in. I haven't seen it anywhere near as much as him. Final question. We'll let you guys go. You just you just opened up for Metallica. I don't know why. It just has it just happened. So you just played for a hundred thousand. Who is the last person in the band standing? Like this is a night when it's a boozing night. We're we're drinking. We're smoking, etc. Who is the last member of the band standing? And what is your beverage of choice for that after party? Oh man, I would say so. Cody, I think it's the cleanest one. In fact. When I first came and recorded with him, that was the first time he's touched alcohol in several years. So I guarantee him. if we ever got Rockstar huge and we're doing drugs and drinking and shit, Cody is the one that would not fall off the horse. Then again, though, I feel like maybe with some twisting, you know, a little arm twisting, maybe. I don't know. But that's what I would say, right, Kev? I, I feel like Cody would be the, the least drunk. Yeah. Piece of shit on our band. <laughs> Wait, did I say piece of shit? Just the least drunk. <laughs> uh, uh, what was the other question? Uh, oh, was everybody's drink of choice? Yeah. Oh, I'd have to go with uh, smoked old fashioned. So, with, so, like when they put the smoke in it and you, you bring it to the table yeah. and all it comes out like that? Yep. Yeah. Nice. Oh, dude, the smoke makes it so much better. Hell yeah. Kev, what would you say? I see you're drinking. Uh, what is it? I got the uh, the Big Deal Brewing, the uh, Spit and Chicklets uh, Labatt beer that they collaborated with. I don't know what that is, but I'll take one if I ever see it. And cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers, man. Uh, I'm just a beer guy, so anything beer-wise, I'm usually pretty good with, unless it's like some really shitty-ass stuff, like Red Dog. <laughs> I have had some Red Dogs back in the day. I don't see that one very often anymore. Oh, dude. some We had a party in college, and a, a group of kids left like a whole case at our apartment. So the next day, you know, we're tailgating and we're like, oh, yeah, free case of beer. Fuck yeah. And then, like, I took one sip and I was just like, get this away from nope. me. This is disgusting. <laughs> Hell yeah. Not even worth it for free. Is well, Red Dog the equivalent of Natty Ice? I think it, it's worse, like, honestly. I would say Yikes. it's way worse as Natty Light is my domestic beer of choice. And I'll explain <laughs> why. We, uh, me and some buddies did a, we had like 15 different beers and we did a domestic blind beer tasting. Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, Coors, all those kind of beers. Water. <laughs> Natty Light won, and this is multiple people involved. None of us could believe it. And since that day, wow. if I'm going to drink a domestic beer, I opt for Natty Light, not only for price, was, but for quality. Was PBR in this PBR contest? PBR was in this contest. Oh. It was the champagne of beer included. When <laughs> yes, the sham, the champagne of beers was also involved. High Life was in a whole bunch of them. Well, fellas, we got to let you go. I appreciate you. If it's okay with you, can I put this interview on YouTube later tonight, send it off to you, and um, possibly check in with you guys maybe six or seven months from now when you have a new song oh, or two yeah. out, touch base, and just chit-chat a little bit more? So just a, good, little, a little sneak peek. Basically, like every six to eight weeks for the foreseeable future, you'll, you'll probably see something new. Oh, hell yeah. Excellent. 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 Well, wait till you get a couple under your belt, and then we'll, we'll touch base again for sure. There we go. Well, fellas, I very <laughs> much good. appreciate it. Thank you so much for spending some time with us, taking some time out of your day. Uh, we'll, we'll chat again soon. Ladies and gentlemen, please support and hit the follow button. Put it to bed! Give me a hell yeah! Thank you, guys.